Hi everyone, my name is Madhvi. I am third year resident in Krishna Institute of Medical Science, Karat. So today I am going to present a paper on characteristics of ring enhancing lesions in brain in correlation with MRI and MR spectroscopy. Introduction, MRI helps in early diagnosis of the diseases which is visually demonstrated as by contrast between gray white matter junction differentiation, tumor ischemia, infarction, edema, multiple sclerosis plaque, infection, abscess and hemorrhage. But in few cases, lesions are seen in the subcortical area and deep layers of brain parenchyma. Magnetic resonance spectroscopy is a vital tool for identifying and diagnosing infective etiologies like intracranial abscess and non-infectious lesions like primary intraparenchymal neoplasms, demyelination, lymphoma and cerebral metastasis. The possible nature and characteristics of these lesions can be achieved by MR spectroscopy on a routine MRI scan by analyzing the quantity and ratio of tissue metabolites such as lipid, choline, amino acids, and acetyl aspartate, etc. Longitudinal studies have demonstrated that proton MR spectroscopy is useful in monitoring the progression of disease and response to the treatment. MR spectroscopy also has a vast prognostic implication. So there is a mnemonic for ring enhancing lesions. It is magical DR. M stands for metastasis, A stands for abscess, G stands for granuloma and glioblastoma, I stands for infarct, C stands for condition, A stands for AIDS, which includes toxoplasmosis, L stands for lymphoma, D stands for demyelination, R stands for radiation necrosis or resolving hematoma. Aims and objectives of my study to analyze and identify the various characteristic ranges of these ring enhancing lesions in brain on conventional MRI and proton MR spectroscopy, which leads to an early diagnosis, treatment, response assessment, and minimize the complications in such patients. The materials and methods of my study, retrospective cross-sectional evaluation of MRI features in 70 patients with uh, ring enhancing lesions in Department of Radio Diagnosis, Kim Scarrard. MR brain was done for patients on Siemens 1.5 Tesla with contrast and other specific sequences as and when seemed appropriate. 70 cases of ring enhancing lesions are were followed and segregated according to the MR findings into tuberculoma, neurocystic sarcosis, metastasis, cerebral abscess, primary brain neoplasm, toxoplasmosis, radiation necrosis, and demyelination disorders. So moving on to my case, 65-year-old male patient with past history of tuberculosis presented with multiple episodes of seizure since one week. MR brain was performed. T2 axial, flare axial, diffusion weighted images and contrast images showing uh, multiple discrete and conglomerated nodular and ring enhancing altered signal intensity lesions noted in involving left parietal lobe which is appearing T2 and flare hyperintense with a significant perilational edema showing no diffusion restriction. On MR spectroscopy, there is a lipid lactate peak. Based on MRI, MR spectroscopy and CSF cytology suggestive of tuberculoma. Moving on to next case. 30-year-old male presented with uh, multiple episodes of seizure since one day, MR brain was performed. T1 axial, T2 axial, flare axial, uh, diffusion weighted images, hemo and uh, post-contrast axial images showing multiple well-defined round lesions diffusely in bilateral cerebral hemispheres involving frontal ganglio-capsular region, midbrain, parietal and occipital lobes which is appearing hypoindense on T1 with eccentric hyperindensity, which represents collex, and showing hyperindensities in T2 and flare with a uh, few of the lesions showing uh, edema, perilational edema, showing no diffusion restriction and uh, blooming on uh, hemosequences. On post-contrast uh, images, there is a uh, few of the lesions are showing ring enhancement, while few of the lesions are not showing any contrast enhancement, which, uh, which we can appreciate in T2, but uh, that lesions are not showing contrast enhancement and uh, the lesions which are showing edema and contrast enhancement is likely to represent granular nodular stage evolving uh, to calcific nodular stage, while the other which uh, with no enhancement are likely to represent neurocystic sarcosis in calcified nodular stage. MR spectroscopy was performed for the same patient and shows a succinate peak at 2.4 ppm. Moving on to next case, 55-year-old male patient, a known case of CA lung, presented with giddiness and one episode of seizure. MR brain was performed. 
T1 axial, T2 axial, flare axial, diffusion weighted images, hemo sequence and uh, post contrast axial images showing well defined altered signal intensity noted in right frontal lobe appearing heterogeneously hyperintense on T2 and flare uh, and uh, showing hypointense on T1 with peripheral T2, uh, T1 hyperintense rim which is appearing T1 hypointense showing heterogeneous patchy diffusion restriction and no blooming on hemo sequences. On post contrast uh, images, we can see there is a, a ring enhancing, ring enhancement noted. On Emma spectroscopy, there is a lipid lactate peak and increased choline peak, which is a suggestive of metastasis. Moving on to next case, 16-year-old female with history of fever, vomiting and persistent headache since 15 days. Total leukocyte count were raised. Emma brain was performed. T1, T2 flare uh, diffusion weighted images and uh, post contrast T1 axial images showing multiple well defined thin walled multi lobulated and few conglomerated lesions showing relatively smooth and convex inner margins appearing iso indense to hypo indense uh, with hyper indense rim and appearing uh, hyper indense uh, center and uh, hypo indense rim on T2. And there is partial suppression on flare and showing avid diffusion restriction and post contrast enhancement. So, on T2 weighted images, there is two concentric rims that is, outer hypo indense rim and inner uh, hyper indense rim. So, this uh, is there is a sign known as dual rim sign, which we can appreciate over here. On MR spectroscopy, the, uh, there are low NA levels. There is high valin leucine isoleucine peak at 0.9 ppm and an alanin peak at 1.48 uh, ppm. So features are suggestive of cerebral abscess. Moving on to next case, 63-year-old male patient presented with complaints of headaches since two months. MR uh, brain was performed. T1 axial, T2 axial, flare axial, diffusion weighted images, hemo sequences and post contrast T1 axial images showing a large well defined altered signal intensity solid lesion uh, noted in juxtaventricular region of left paratoccipital temporal group involving the splenium of the uh, splenium of the corpus callosum minimal flare hyperintensity noted and there is effacement of adjacent cortical sulcal spaces sylvian fissure and uh, mass effect on the ipsilateral lateral ventricle and causing midline shift to right side it is appearing iso-indense on uh, T1-weighted, hyper-indense signal on T2-weighted or flare sequences and showing diffusion restriction on uh, diffusion-weighted image and uh, ADC sequences, patchy areas of blooming on hemo sequence and post-contrast enhancement. Non-enhancing T2 Non-enhancing T2 hyperindense areas are noted in the uh, within the lesion, suggestive of cystic or necrotic areas, few of them showing blood fluid levels which uh, we can see there is blooming on hemo sequences. Patient has undergone uh, excisional biopsy and turned out to be glioblastoma, IDH wild type. MR spectroscopy was uh, done for the same patient and there was marked elevation of choline levels, creatine and the uh, myoinositol levels, and uh, which is suggestive of glioma. But there is lipid lactate peak also in our case, so it is suggestive of high-grade glioma. Moving on to next case, 60-year-old female patient known case of HIV presented with necrogenity and fever since one week, MR brain was performed, T1 axial, T2 axial, flare axial, diffusion weighted images and post contrast T1 axial images showing well-defined lobulated altered signal intensity lesion noted in right lateral frontoparietal lobe and in splenium of the, uh, splenium of the corpus callosum. Minimal perilational edema is noted. And the lesions are appearing isoindense on T1, hyperindense on T2 and flare and showing diffusion restriction, patchy diffusion restriction and uh, contrast enhancement. On MR spectroscopy, there is a choline peak, reduced NA level and uh, also lipid lactate peak can be appreciated. So features are suggestive of CNS lymphoma. Next case, 28-year-old male patient, known case of HIV, presented with negligibility and fever since one week. MR brain... Uh, T1 axial, T2 axial, uh, flare, diffusion weighted images, T1 and flare post contrast images showing multifocal concentric target sign with concentric, uh, concentric alternating hyper and hypo intensities. Uh, 
noted involving bilateral basal ganglia appearing hypointense on uh, T1, hyperintense on T2 and flare showing minimal peripheral diffusion restriction and post contrast enhancement. On MR spectroscopy, there is a lipid lactate peak while the choline levels are absent. So CSF cytology was done and came out to be toxoplasmosis. Moving on to next case, 35-year-old female presented with generalized weakness and left orbital pain since one month. MR brain was performed. T2 axial, flare axial, diffusion weighted images, T2 SAG images and contrast uh, T1 axial images and coronal images showing multiple T2 flare hyperintensities in bilateral white matter region, predominantly in the periventricular region, along the perimedullary veins, caloceptal interface, then subcortical U fibers and the uh, cervicomedullary junction, appearing uh, T2 and flare hyperindense and uh, showing no diffusion restriction and mild incomplete ring enhancement seen in the splenium of the corpus callosum. And also there is an ill-defined mild enhancement of left optic nerve after contrast administration. CSF cytology was done and was positive for IgG oligoclonal glands suggestive of multiple sclerosis. MR uh, spectroscopy was uh, done and there is marked elevation of lipid peak at 1.33 uh, ppm and mild glutamine glutamate peak at 2.2 ppm. Moving on to next case, 60-year-old female follow-up case of low-grade uh, astrocytoma post-radiotherapy with complaints of headache. MR brain was performed, T1, T1 axial, T2 axial, flare axial, diffusion weighted images and uh, post-contrast coronal images showing an irregular area of altered signal intensity noted in left frontal lobe appearing hypoindense on T1, uh, T1 and flare and hyperindense on T2 showing no diffusion restriction and uh, mild contrast enhancement. And there is uh, gliosis in the left frontal lobe with a craniotomy defect which is suggestive of post-operative changes. And on MR spectroscopy, we can appreciate there is lipid lactate peak and reduced NA levels. Based on MR spectroscopy and interval follow-up, features favor radiation necrosis over recurrence or residual lesion. So results of my study is... Uh, is uh, tabulated over here. So there were 20 cases of tuberculomas, 15 cases of neurocystic sarcosis, 30, 13 cases of cerebral abscess, 9 cases of metastasis, 7 cases of primary brain neoplasm, 4 cases of toxoplasmosis, and 2 cases of others, which includes demyelination and radiation necrosis. So enhancement characteristics, thick and nodular lesion is neoplastic, thick and regular lesion could be uh, abscess, thin and regular with crenated margins could be fungal abscess, incomplete ring towards cortex or gray matter includes demyelination, ring enhancement with mural nodule includes pilocytic astrocytoma. There are specific MR spectroscopic characteristics, one is colon, lactate and succinate peak seen in uh, neurocystic sarcosis, lipid lactate peak which is seen in tuberculoma, radiation necrosis, toxoplasmosis, amino acids like valine, isoleucin, leucinolanin peak which is seen in abscess, Peritumeral choline peak, uh, myoinositol and creatine peak in intratumoral region is primary brain tumors. Lipid lactate and choline peak is seen in metastasis. Choline and lipid, uh, lipid peak, twin peak sign, which is seen in lymphoma and glutamate glutamate peak, which is seen in white matter disorders. Conclusion, use of MRI along with MR spectroscopy is a very useful, important and primary research tool in neurodiagnosis. Most common ring enhancing lesions experienced in developing countries like India as tuberculomas and MCC. T2-weighted hyperintensity with no diffusion restriction and presence of scolics helps in differentiating MCC from tuberculomas. Tuberculomas show lipid lactate peak, whereas MCC shows succinate peak. Abscess shows T2-weighted hypointense rim with central diffusion restriction, that is dual rim sign with amino acid peaks. High-grade gliomas may be lobulated with central necrotic component with thick irregular ring enhancing lesions with very high choline creatine ratios, myoinositol peak and low NAA, whereas metastasis are well-defined T2-weighted hyperintense lesions with high choline and lipid lactate peaks. Tumefactor demyelination most commonly shows incomplete ring enhancement with open uh, part predominantly towards the cortex and glutamine glutamate peak. Toxoplasma appear T2 flare concentric ring pattern with lipid lactate peak whereas lymphoma shows twin peak sign, that is high choline and lipid peak. Radiation necrosis show lipid lactate peak, whereas recurrent mass lesion show high choline peak and lipid lactate peak. Hence, conventional MR imaging along with MR spectroscopy can be useful to reach a correct diagnosis and also in differentiation of perilational edema from neoplastic invasion. So these are the, uh, my references. Thank you.